everybody. This is Dr. Gina Nelson, and I'd like to welcome you to the inaugural version of my first podcast called Real OBGYN, because that's what I am, and that's what I do. This first episode comes on March 15th, um, early in the days of the coronavirus pandemic, so we are going to have to devote a fair amount of attention to that. But before I do that, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm an OBGYN. I have been so for um, well over 25 years, and I've been practicing in one location and I have a stable body of patients up in Northwest Montana. Um, and on that note, I would like to address my patients first and foremost and say, hey, I um, hope everything's going well for you. I'd like to let you know that Monday Clinic, March 16th, is gonna proceed as per usual. However, after that, uh, due to the coronavirus uh, pandemic, um, we will be curtailing clinic Tuesday forward um, to include only those patients who are um, must sees. Those are patients with um, well-defined issues that need checking, um, as opposed to those who are just coming in to get their annual exam. Those of you who are scheduled for routine rather than indicated visits, will be contacted shortly, but you are also free to call in to us at any time and find out what's going on with your appointment. We're available at 755-6550 um, during business hours until four, um, and we look forward to hearing from you. Um, whatever you do, if you are sick, call us so that we can triage you. We are not in a position of receiving sick patients at clinic. We would be happy to triage you and see if you need to be examined or have any diagnostic studies. Um, you may be routed to urgent care or the emergency room in the event that you are already sick. So um, no harm in calling though. Uh, beyond that, I think I would like to address my comments in the rest of the, this short podcast to everyone who is interested, about, um, interested in the coronavirus pandemic. So this is a pandemic, and a pandemic is distinct from an epidemic in that it has, it has gone beyond a certain defined geographic area to include many countries and, in fact, be a global issue. So um, it is not a hoax, and the response that you see unfolding is not overblown. Um, the... The issue with coronavirus is that it's different than other viruses that we have encountered. Uh, it is a novel virus, meaning the human population does not bear immunity to it. Um, and unlike the flu, to which it has been often compared, there is no medication. There is no clear knowledge of where it is and isn't based on the lack of testing. And there is no vaccine. So we're responding to this virus very differently than we respond to say the annual flu epidemic. Um, and those are the reasons why we can't find it. It's somewhat unseen because testing is not available everywhere. We can't treat it and we can't prevent it except by social distancing, which leads me to probably the most important point here. And that is that we need to begin social distancing. Social distancing means curtailing your exposure to other people. You curtail this, they say at this point, um, away from gatherings that include 50 or more people. So that could be work-related meetings, that could be entertainment-related gatherings, but it's probably prudent to curtail your exposure to large groups of people. Everyone's got to go shop. Everyone's maybe got to go to the doctor. There are certain things people have to do. When you do, you observe the social distancing of six feet from another person. The reason for this is because coronavirus is a respiratory virus and is spread by respiratory droplets. Now, respiratory droplets um, are generated through through coughing and sneezing, yes, for sure, but also by speech. And so if you um, 
you know, come any closer than about six feet, you're going to get exposed to them. Moreover, the respiratory droplets that are generated actually stay infective when they hit surfaces. And that is why hands need to be washed, faces need not to be touched, and surfaces need to be washed with soap and water and then additionally disinfected. Now, there are many commercially available disinfectants that you can use in your home or establishment, um, or you can make your own uh, with about a third of a cup of bleach per gallon of water. So it isn't rocket science. Um, at this point, if you are sick, you need to call your doctor, touch base. You may say, well, you know, I just have the garden variety, fever, you know, cold symptoms, you know, cough, sore throat probably you don't have the coronavirus. However, when you touch base with your doctor and you get the usual recommendations and you follow them, meaning the rest, the hydration, the cold remedies, and you find that you are not getting better or that you're getting worse, then call back, give some feedback. You may be directed in a different direction for more testing, more treatment. So the important thing is to know when to reach out. So um, another thing to understand about the importance of social distancing is that symptoms from this virus only appear two to 14 days after exposure. And thus you may have a large group of people wandering around, carrying the virus, exposing people to the virus, and still not presenting as clinically ill. So that is why we do believe that social distancing can really cause this transmission of this virus to flatten off and then it'll die down and then the population will develop some immunity and hopefully the scientific um, institutions will develop vaccine. So that's where we're at with this at this point. But information is changing very rapidly. Um, we physicians are hooked into our respective hospitals and they are keeping us up to date on an hourly basis. You too can keep up to date if you go to the website for your county health department or to the cdc.gov. I will include those references in show notes, which can be found on my website at drgenanelson.com. And um, together with you know the regular show notes, you, there you can also find general information in topics ranging from obstetrics, gynecology, and health maintenance. So I really appreciate you staying and listening. Thank you so much and be well.